Okay, now we can begin on auth. First place we're going to want to go is to our next config. And here we're going to have to add our side base next auth module. While we're here in our next config, let's actually also add a couple M bars that we're going to be using. So add in your runtime config, we're going to want something called an auth secret. And this can be that process.m.auth secret. And then we're also going to use GitHub client ID and GitHub client secret. I know uh, we actually don't have these M bars just yet. So let's actually just add it in an M file. Okay, so remember we had this auth secret, GitHub client ID, and GitHub client secret. And we'll fill these values in soon. Next, what we're going to want to do is create an auth configuration object. So I'm going to just add a couple of things here. And this is going to be auth origin. Base URL. Uh, let's just go ahead and say HTTP localhost 3000. We're going to extend this with API slash auth. And we're going to do a provider object. So here we're going to say type js. Default provider is going to be GitHub. And then we're going to add a default callback and say this is true. One last object is going to be the session refresh. Enable periodically true. Enable on window focus true. So this is just kind of the default that Nux auth recommends. Um, a few additions are um, basically this default provider as well as the type. These are going to be specific to our project, but everything else is just kind of default uh, what, uh, what Nux auth recommends us to use. So I wouldn't worry too much about this, but if you are curious, just read the docs. Cool. So now we have our .m file. Let's add these. I'm going to navigate to the installations or the auth section, and I'm actually going to just find let's see, this button, GitHub application. So this is just a quick URL, um, but basically we're going to GitHub settings application new. So this is to register new OAuth application. I'm going to just call this Nux Stripe Tutorial. Homepage URL is uh, HTTP localhost 3000. You can give this any description you want, but it's optional. Um, and what's important here is we're actually going to add our callback URL. So here we do API slash auth slash callback slash GitHub. And this is just the default value uh, provided by the libraries we're using. Now register application. And here we are, application created successfully. Here's our GitHub client ID. Add that to your end. And then we're actually going to do a client secret. All right, now I have a client secret. And Pop that right in there. So these values are necessary. It's how GitHub, I guess, validates that this GitHub app, this web app is like legitimate, and it's what enables our login with GitHub button to work, as we'll see shortly. The last bit of this is our auth secret. So this is just a secret key that we have to generate ourselves. Uh, the secret is a random string used to hash tokens and encrypt cookie and generate cryptographic keys. Uh, it's actually not necessary for development, but it is required for deployment. So I decided I'll just include it now. So how we're going to generate that is using open this open SSL random command. We're going to say base 64, 32. Now again, this is just something um, Auth.js actually recommends in their docs. So I'm just, 
help me out and showing it to you here. Okay. Now we copy that value, pop it right into our auth secret and variable. Cool. Now from a structure standpoint, our application is good to go. We can now start writing some code. So let's navigate to server. We're actually going to add an API directory and then within it an auth directory. And then we're going to do this funny little triple dot dot ts file. See how it has the square brackets. So if you're not familiar, this is Nux syntax of a catch all route. It basically just means anything after, uh, if you navigate to API slash auth, and then anything after auth is a wildcard. So if you remember in our callback, we actually have it, it sees the callback and then the GitHub. So this will actually like recognize these patterns and run code based off of it. Cool. So what are we going to do here? First, I'm going to import a couple of functions. So we're going to do GitHub provider. Oops, GitHub provider from next off provider slash GitHub. We're going to do an import nux auth handler from auth. We're going to do our Prisma adapter. We're going to do our Prisma client as well. And once we're in here, yeah, we'll, oops, we'll do const Prisma. And we're actually going to do a const runtime config equals use runtime config. Oops. so that we have access to our n variables, such as our GitHub client IDs and secrets and stuff like that. Next, let's export default Nux auth handler. And then in here, we'll say secret runtime config dot auth secret adapter, Prisma adapter and then providers. And here we're gonna use our GitHub, oops, GitHub provider. Oops, we're gonna actually yeah, do that, that default. And then this is client ID, runtime config, that client ID, runtime config, that client secret. So this will give us a little type error and this is expected. Um, in fact, in the Nux to off documentation, they recommend just throwing an ignore or an expect error here. Okay. So what did we just do? Uh, we attached our adapter here to a Prisma adapter, as well as our GitHub provider. So our providers are all of like the auth providers that we are going to allow the user to log in with. So if you wanted to also have like Google, for example, you could add a Google provider. Uh, the adapter is just providing simple hooks for uh, our auth to talk to our database. Um, because our database is going to be managed with Prisma, uh, our auth is then going to be using Prisma specific functions. So for example, when we register a user and create a new user, it's going to be running Prisma code to create that user. And then secret, this is just uh, something we need for um, our auth to work. So we can close that. And something else we're going to have to do is uh, some Prisma setup. Um, so run Prisma init. And we're going to say data source provider SQL light. So Prisma supports, I think, just about any database provider. I'm using SQL light just for the simplicity of it. If you read here, uh, it actually adds some code to our .m, so our database URL. I'll delete all this. It also creates a Prisma directory with our schema. So this is very, very basic schema file. In fact, it does just about nothing. It's just creating kind of the skeleton that we can use to create Prisma to our database. 
And here you can see it's connecting to our particular database URL. We're going to use, we're going to follow the AuthJS Prisma docs. Um, or if you want, you can find the code here in my blog article. And within this, we're going to copy this entire schema. And so this is AuthJS's Prisma adapter docs. They recommend this particular schema, at least to start. And so we're going to have multiple database tables. We have user, as well as account, as well as session and verification token. So this just handles kind of the auth flow, um, as well as saving users and accounts information when logging in, logging out, etc. With this new schema, we're actually going to want to run a couple additional Prisma commands. So we run npx Prisma generate, which just generates the type information for autocomplete, which I find very handy when doing queries. And then we're also going to do it npx Prisma generate, oh, sorry, migrate dev. And this is actually going to create our SQL migration files. And here I'll just say auth integrated. Now you can see it actually created a couple files for us. So here we now have our dev db, just a simple SQLite database with the tables from our schema. And then we also have migrations with the actual raw SQL to create these tables. Now we're not going to have to touch any of that code. In fact, it's all entirely auto-generated. Nothing you have to worry about. Just sometimes it's 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 good to know what's going on. Be underneath the hood if you ever have to dig into um, advanced debugging. Cool. Almost there. All right. Let's get into some Nux code now. So we're gonna go to our app view and we're gonna say Nux page. So what this allows us to do now is it cre we can create our pages directory and in it, an index.view file. So you see here we have pages, index.view. And now in here, let's just say, hello world, okay? And now with our page running, and if I log, yeah, reload, we have hello world. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. Um, this is just basic Nux code at this point. Uh, so just preference, I prefer my script tag at the top. I find that I do more TypeScript than actual like HTML and CSS. So I prefer that logic to be at the beginning. And now we're going to do, we're going to build out our authentication. We're going to do a very basic login, log out. So we're going to pull out a couple things, status, sign in, sign out. And we're going to extract this from our use auth composable provided by Nux Sidebase Auth. With this, I want to do a couple of things. So I can say div, you are currently status. Let's just see what this looks like, unauthenticated. So we're going to use status to um, dynamically render a sign in and sign out button. So I'm going to say B if status equal, equal, equal authenticated. And this is okay. I'll just use that. Uh, if status is authenticated, then we're going to want to run sign out provided by use auth. Otherwise, sign in. So we're currently unauthentic unauthenticated. So let's sign in. And here we're in our familiar GitHub OAuth authorization, and I can now authorize it. And it should redirect, and now you're currently authenticated. Pretty neat, right? And then sign out. And so there you have it. We are we have sign in, sign out. Pretty pretty simple. Um, I do have a little code snippet here that I that you might enjoy. 
Um, it's just an optional code snippet with more styling. Um, all of the logic is the same, but here, if you now you can see nice little button. You're currently authenticated. Sign in, sign out. Voila. Now, I just want to show one thing because we do have some database stuff. We do MPX Prisma Studio. This summons a local web server. And you can look, we have users and accounts. So here, our GitHub provider has a bit of data. And if we go into user, that's me. Cody Montague has my avatar. And all of that is saved when you click sign in and you give GitHub uh, permission to sign in on our web app. So I hope that wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed. So I hope that wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot. This is going to be like a fundamental piece of code that we're going to work with throughout the remainder of our course, um, especially here in the dot dot. This is kind of going to be where we do a lot of the interaction between our database and our user, which is then passed to our client. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.